Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure Hello. to speak to you today. How's it going? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, so Medusa Deluxe, very difficult one, I think, to kind of summarise in any sort of neat sentences. Um, yeah. But for people who don't know anything about it, can you just tell us what they can expect? Um, it's so the as it was explained to me when I first when I first uh, had the conversation with Major, it's a dark comedy murder mystery all set backstage at a regional hairdressing competition. It's about uh, love. It's about friendship. It's about heartbreak. Um, it's about um, don't come into terms with your demons. Um, and really, it's sort of about you know, so it's sort of about life and how to you know sort of life and death. I guess, you know, the circle of, should we say. And I guess in today's world, you know, we can sort of feel like the cinema's clogged up with, you know, sort of very big franchises and CGI heavy kind of movies. You know, ones like this feel so special, just how original it feels. And the fact that it is kind of pushing the boundaries of um, genre and, and what we expect to see in cinema. Um, so when you first picked up that script, what did you think and what was the draw for you? I mean, did, I, I mean, I, I was drawn to, I was drawn to the, before I'd even got anywhere near the script as soon as I got off the phone with my agent she told me what it was you know what the premise of the film was and stuff I couldn't wait to read it um and I remember thinking it was absolutely mental but I remember thinking I really want to be a part of this at the same time you know um and coming from a family of hairdressers as well I felt like it's something that I knew about the world you know um so yeah and like you said it's something because it is it's it's something different it's not it's not like you're you know what you're what we're used to seeing at, at cinemas with the you know with the, the whole marvel universe and these big sort of action epics i think it just goes back to good honest filmmaking you know there's no tricks no no you know just a camera and and a set of actors trying to do their best and and what about your character? Because it's really, you know, it's very firmly an ensemble piece. And I love the fact, though, that each character gets their moment to shine and it's almost passing the baton onto the next, which then pushes the narrative forward. Um, but I guess for each of you, you had to think of, you know, the whole broader world, a, a whole rounded character that would have to shine through in that moment. So what about your particular character and, and how did you make sense of him? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, one thing about Angel is that he's, you know, I was very aware that he's obviously, you know, he's just lost his partner um, who he was, you know, head over heels in love with. They've got a little boy together that they've, you know, that they've, they've they used a surrogate to, to have. And it was, for me, it was just about making sure that the, the level of, of heartbreak and, and, and that sort of aspect of Angel was, was as honest as possible. Uh, just sort of tried to put myself in the shoe. I mean, I've been, I've lost, you know, loved ones um, before, not, in the way that Mosca died, but um, but uh, you know, I've it's I, yeah. For me, it was just making sure that the that the uh, the the grief was was as honest as possible. And I think playing that, I think playing that as honestly as possible. I think in a weird way, that's where the comedy came. You know, it's sort of like finding light in the darkest of moments. And I guess you, my next question was going to be, you would mention there that you actually come from a, a family of hairdressers. So I guess you had a bit of a head start in that way, but it is so rooted in this kind of other world. It actually reminded me, I don't know if you ever watched Cutting It from yeah, yeah, yeah. years ago. Yeah, but it was a bit like that, but kind of done in a sort of more contemporary way, you know, and a bit kind of more like artistic, yeah, kind of arty way. But um, if you already had that familiarity, did you have to go and do any more research or spend time or like kind of understand, you know, the obsession, I guess, and the intensity. So there's kind of that gossipy aspect to it. But this is something that people really care deeply about as well. And should we yeah. be looking at hairdressing on the same level as other art forms, for example? So it's also elevating it in that sense. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think there's. I mean, there's a great line that uh, Claire Perkins' character Cleve has towards the end of the film. I mean, I think I think a lot of my my scenes, as, like as 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 Angel, were they're quite self-contained. He's not really he's he himself. He's not really involved in like you know the gossipy stuff that happens throughout the throughout the movie. He sort of he sort of sort of almost independently got his own sort of story. You know, he sort of you see him on his own quite a lot, and you know, um, so. Yeah, I think that was, I think try, so making sure like navigating that was, was, uh, was important to me. Yeah. And um, the, the fact that it kind of pulls, he, Tom manages to pull off this 
this very sort of stylized look of it being like it's one take, um, uh, you know, and it's so seamlessly done. Now, I wonder how that played out for you guys on set. I guess you must have had to do a lot of rehearsals. Maybe it almost felt more like doing a theatre play than than actually, you know, filming a film. Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. I mean, we rehearsed for almost as long as you would a play. You know, we rehearsed for about probably about five weeks in total. Um, and then obviously we had a lot of rehearsals when we got to the set. So we, I think like for the first two weeks of rehearsal, we were just, a lot of it was just in uh, like a, big, a, a large rehearsal room, you know, in, in Shoreditch. And then as we sort of started to make our way towards Preston, where we filmed it um, and getting the, getting the, you know, the story on its feet and start to like, you know, track the journey. And, you know, we're going to be walking through here and down these steps and, and blah, blah, blah. And um, that was, um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, and the thing is, well, it was it was all so new to me. I'd never shot a movie like that, and to have and to have the joy of of that much rehearsal time was um, it was such a treat because you don't normally get that on a on a TV show or a movie. You know, you get you sort of you'll have your you'll have your rehearsal sort of on the day or maybe a couple of days before, but you don't really. It's very very rare that you actually get to rehearse for that long. You know, and I think with it being like you said, you know, making it, making it seamlessly feel like one take. Um, obviously, we chopped the movie up into a few different parts, and and the editors sort of cut it together, which which made it look, you know, like you said, seamless. Um, but it definitely kept us all on our toes because we didn't have the joy of just being able to sort of cut and go again, you know, especially if you're fifteen minutes into a twenty minute long take, you know. So it just it kept us on our toes and it kept us focused. And yeah, it was. Um, I think everyone was was happy to be doing something that was sort of new to to us, you know. And what, and what about working with Tom? Because I, I had the, the pleasure of speaking to him yesterday and, you know, what really comes across is such a passion project of yeah. his um, and seemed to have just managed to get so many brilliant people on board with him, whether that's from, you know, the cast, such yourself, um, but also the creative team, you know, Eugene, Eugene doing the kind of the hair and, and everything else like that. So, you know, it was a really great kind of being on board with someone like that on a project like this, who's just kind of so enthusiastic and so ambitious and doing such great things. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I remember I remember being so drawn to Tom, um, you know, before I'd even met him before, you know, the first time I met Tom was over Zoom um, just after I'd had the offer. And he, you know, just to see that his, you know, his writing, his writing ability, I was like, yeah, this guy's definitely got something. And Tom, like you said, he sells himself, you know, to be able to get someone like, you know, Eugene Suleiman doing the hair and Robbie Ryan as DP, who had just come off the back of doing things like The Favourite and Marriage Story and, you know, all of these like, amazing movies. So Tom is, um, he's definitely got, he's definitely got that pull that people like to, you know, he's, he's special and he's, um, he's, he's an incredible, he's an incredible talent and uh, an amazing artist. And he's got such a, he's got such a, an amazing mind. And I think, you know, to, to, to be a part of his vision was, you know, like, I think, and I think, think I speak for the whole, like everybody, not just the cast, but um, it's a real pleasure to be a part of that. And for it to be his first, you know, his debut feature as well, um, just sort of makes it feel a little bit more special. And what about working with the fellow cast? I mean, I, like I was saying, you know, I love the fact that each character feels so kind of well thought through and really lived in, even if, you know, they're not on screen for that long, each individually. Um, so, you know, did you have like a lot of fun on this set with these people all there together for this nine days period? I think it was. Did yeah, we, yeah, we did. We did have a lot of fun. And it was, um, and we, you know, we were sort of bonded by the fact that we filmed this during like, you know, during the pandemic and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, we were sort of forced to be together. There's nothing else. I open so we, not that we not that it was like a, a chore by any means but we were forced to sort of spend much spend time together sort of on set and off set and having that that long sort of extended rehearsal period sort of definitely brought us all together and like you said it allowed us to to make our characters feel a little bit more lifted and i think another thing that's very distinctive about it is that it's a dark comedy and there are so many sort of like brilliantly scathing lines like you know really great insults and things like that and, and but you kind of it, it's an interesting one because you're not sort of expecting it to be these moments to pop uh crop up um so i wonder you know like is it quite difficult sometimes to make the you know the script land because it's one thing to read it on the paper it's another thing to make these these things funny in the moment so you know yeah. how do you make that happen definitely i think well for me personally it was uh, i was just i was just having this conversation with somebody else and for me personally it was just making sure that the honesty of the like the grief and the honesty of the grief was um was was there you know it's like i think the fact that is you know my, that my character especially is so utterly heartbroken if you play the, if you play the heartbreak convincingly enough the comedy comes from what you're saying anyway and what you're doing you know um 
so yeah for me it was just making sure that the that the that the that the um like the level of grief was as honest and truthful as possible and then i think the rest of it just sort of fell into place it didn't trying to find those comedic mo- for trying to find those comedic moments just it, you know I, we didn't really have to look for them that much because a lot of it was there in the writing and then when you get you know when we got it on its feet and you know something would just happen or something would come to you it would just it would just be there you know it's just it was um i think it's like the contradiction of it being such a, a heartbreaking moment with the fact there's just been death and he's now a single father for my character you know um sort of sort of cushioned in this in this like crazy situation i think that's what that kind of makes it funny in its own right you know and um uh sorry i just forgot what i was gonna say i don't know i'm just going blank um oh yeah sorry um the, you know obviously it is this murder mystery kind of who done it like you know so it's kind of going within that genre but almost taking the tropes of it and maybe kind of inverting it because we haven't got like the normal detective um you know the yeah. audience is almost the detective we are kind of going through what's happened um so i wondered do you did you have any kind of um uh, murder mystery films or shows that you liked growing up or were you thinking of any when you were making sh- when making the film um you know i actually did if i'm honest i didn't really have any any sort of murder mystery references um if i'm honest because i think i think although it is like a murder mystery i think a lot of it like you said there's no there's not there's not no detectives and there's no you know you don't really see the police or you know the forensics or any of that sort of stuff like you said you know the the you know the cast you know the the like the lead characters the ensemble cast are are sort of like detectives in themselves um so for me i didn't really see it like the murder the murder mystery side of things wasn't wasn't like my main focus as um was yeah it wasn't my main focus as a as a, like when when i was approaching the film if i'm honest i think that, that sort of like came that sort of came later hmm. yeah and the other thing that tom's done so well i think is kind of capture like we said something very contemporary in in sort of the you know the diversity of the cast um and kind of you know so like such a female-led um cast as well and and you know, there's queer characters and and I feel like that's something as well that puts puts us in a different zone than you sometimes see in like a lot of mainstream films and did that feel quite refreshing as well and to show this different community and that you don't normally see represented. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was that was always Tom's um, that was always Tom's vision. Anyway, I remember having this conversation with Tom, um, you know, when we when we first met over Zoom, and he was talking about who you know he was talking about that he wanted it to feel as inclusive as possible, you know. And there's you know there's sort of there's theme you know there's um you know there's there's sort of just like dialogue about religion and you know sort of spiritualism and you know death and life and all these so you know you wanted to touch on all these different themes and I think like you said that with it being such a diverse cast I feel I feel like without sounding cliche sort of there is something in it for everybody you know theme wise and you know and everything else and it was um and you know the the inclusivity of um of 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 touching all those different all those different points was definitely something that Tom tried to do and I'm you know I think he did it. I think he, I think we, well, we, you know, sort of, we did it with his, with his uh, direction. And I'm almost out of time, but, you know, you've had such a diverse career. You seem to have been so prolific, uh, you know, right from back when you were doing Skins and Shantaram and uh, Shantaram Bone and all these different shows, you know, what have been some of the highlights for you so far? And and what have you got next on the horizon? Um, I mean, this is definitely, you know, doing this movie was definitely a, was definitely a, a career highlight, especially over the last few years um some of the projects I've done Shantaram was another one that I really really enjoyed and I think for me it's just about you know trying to trying to play characters that that sort of that I feel as connected to as possible um so yeah I mean and having and you know getting to do getting to to act as well you know not just playing sort of the the one sort of role that some people can that I've so have sometimes been sort of typecasted or pushed towards or like maybe technically like, you know the romantic lead the romantic brooding lead like you know sort of hero lead or whatever um, so getting to sort of having, you know, getting to sort of have that fun with with it and, and you know, have these new experiences and play new characters. Um, that's always a, it's a big, um, it's, a, it's always a real pleasure when you get to do that as an artist. And yeah, I mean, and I've got a couple of a uh, couple of projects coming out, coming out soon. Um, next year, there's another, another couple. We're filming, we're filming um, Rivals for Disney Plus at the moment, which is really, really fun. I'm having a lot of fun on that. Um, and that will take me up to, towards the end of the year. So just enjoying that. And then. See where we go from there.
Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. And I can't wait for everyone else to see Medusa Deluxe. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.